All right, it's Saturday. I already said I was gonna make videos. Let's talk about my topic here today. You see what it says? Why don't you support and resistance? Price value is important. When I'm talking about price value, I'm talking about uh, if, you, if you were trading USDJPY and the value of USDJPY drops, right? I'm talking about, let's talk about last week here. I want to talk about last week where USDJPY back on Monday started out pretty low and then it went back up to like 110.8, 110.9 and then dropped back to like 110.3, 110.2. Okay. And let's see if I can pull up a chart. Probably should have just pulled up a chart for you guys to take a look at. What? Just kidding. Ignore messages. Okay, let's see what I want to talk about here. Uh, I want to retrace back. Let's see, today's the fifth. Okay, this is just too much looking back, too much backtracking. If you guys look at the previous video of August 1st and August 2nd, and up until now, you can see what I was talking about for USDJPY, where even though uh, that daily was bad news for US, the dollar still rose up, it still rised up, and then, and then USDJPY went back up. But then on Tuesday, everything reversed. And so, <clears throat> during that high volatile uh, volatility day on Tuesday morning in New York sessions, that USDJPY still went up, even though the news wasn't really that good for the US. Uh, back to the price value. USDJPY did not go back to it's, it's original lowest uh, lowest day of of what it was at on Monday, which was like 109, 109 something, I forgot what it was, but it was like 109 something. And when you, when you look at the candles, I mean, I know there's candlestick patterns, but when you look at the candles, and it's just trying to break through that, it's just trying to break through that, you know, that price point as much as it can. If it doesn't break through that for the, the third time or the fourth time, obviously, obviously, I'm going to buy it. And it ended up retracing all the way back to like 110.8, 110.9. Couldn't come close to 111. And then it shot right back down to like 110. 110, uh, let's see, 110.4, 110.3 again. And then, so I want to recap on Thursday. Bad news for US in the morning. ISM was bad. USDJPY was climbing up. The anticipation of the ISM of the US, they thought that it was going to be good. It climbed all the way up to like, 110.8, 110.7, somewhere around there, and then, and then it immediately dropped. And then it just, it just kept dropping. And it tried to retrace, but it couldn't. And so, and so I was looking at a price gap of 111 and 109.9. Or I could just say round up to 110.0. 111 and 110. And when I look at these from highest value to lowest value, the gap is right there. And so there was no point of swinging at all for USDJPY. Had I just decided just to swing my trades 
starting from Sunday and all the way till Friday wouldn't be worth it. You know, so this past week's been nothing but like scalping on the uh, 30 minute and the one hour chart. And I know I talk a lot about the four hour chart, you know, in, in my past videos, but you have to understand that this past week there was no, there wasn't really a point of scalping at all. There was, I mean, I'm, I'm swinging. If you were, if you were swinging, even if even if you were swinging buying euro and the pound, yeah, the euro hit 119, but it never, it never went even up to 120. It it just kept fluctuating from 118. 118.3, to back to 118.9, 118.8, back down to 118.5, 118.4. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, if you really look at the 15 minute and 30 minute chart, you can see the range and where the zones are. And so, <clears throat> basically, they're just in the in in the gap where you know that. You could scalp off back and down, back and down, back and down. So that's why I said, uh, if you look at 12 hours a day on a 12 hour pattern, you know that you know that it will rise up for a certain amount of hours, and it'll it'll drop back for a certain amount of hours. So you don't have to swing heavily for two to three days. You know. Th this this past week wasn't even the week to even swing for that long, and so so back to Thursday, USDJPY dropped throughout all the day in New York sessions, and even Asian session. I'm talking about Tokyo session. It didn't even it barely even went up back to 110. I mean, they did tap 110, but it never came past. 110 probably might hit 110 one while I was sleeping I didn't really pay attention to London sessions at the time because there was barely any news for London sessions there was like five five little low news for euro nails that nothing for the pound the pound the pound everything on the pound was on Thursday morning at 6 a.m. my time the pound was dovish because of the Bank of England couldn't come up with any good uh, positive notes for the for their currency, so that's why the pound dropped. Uh, but I mean, the pound was just stagnating, just sitting around at one one thirty two, and it went back down to one thirty one because of the dovish statements from the Bank of England. And then Friday was. Friday was key key moments of profiting or losing profit. And so like I said, I look at the price gap, highest of the day, lowest of the day. If it can't break the lowest price point of, of what happened of yesterday, why would it break you know why would it break today? You know, or why you know and so back to the price the price value if i'm going to trade usd jpy i want to know exactly you know how high can it really go and how low can it really go you know and i start to anticipate on sunday where how high you usd jpy can really go till the end of friday and how low it might end up going till the end of friday and I, I always, I always, you know, do my pre markups on price gaps. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about looking at candles or supporting resistance. I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not talking about um, the pattern or anything. I'm just talking about what I want to mark up if the price gap of how high can UCKY hit? Can it? So like, let's just say an example like. Uh, for next week, I already know USDJPY is going to be a buy. Oh, like I said, unless something happens with Trump or North Korea strikes, I already know that it should hit close back to one thirteen or one fourteen. If if 
if the whole week is really positive for us i'm assuming pretty high right for because i did it did hit 111 at the end of friday but i never stayed there it's at 110.6 right now and like i said USDJPY can move so fast because there's only three decimal points versus versus the pound and euro they have like I think five decimal points yeah five five digits versus three digits on 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 USDJPY so and so that's why USDJPY can go up fast but it can come down pretty fast too because it's a very sensitive currency. Uh, and since it's USDJPY, remember that you, the United States and Japan are allies, so they both are pretty much on the same page. And so you have to remember that. Uh, so, uh, try to see. Uh, gold, yeah, let's talk about gold on price value. Gold never hit gold topped up at 1274 tap 1274 on was it monday yeah monday and it never went back up to 1274 it tried went up to like 1272 on tuesday and then dropped back went back to 1270 on wednesday and then dropped back and then thursday just stayed around 1269 1268 and then as soon as Friday morning when New York session opened, it just it tra it, uh, it went climbing up. It started climbing up. <clears throat> and I was like <clears throat> I was like, wow. And I, I thought like oh I was like, wow, I'm really shocked that it's trying to climb up right now. But then but then I was I told I totally was thinking so much that I forgot that, you know, it was NFP, not farm payroll, so Everyone anticipated that it was bad news for the U.S., but I mean, you have to know what rises yesterday is gonna fall the next day, and so with with each session, you know, understand that the highest day, I mean, the highest value when it holds, and then the lowest value. Of when it closes on that day and if it doesn't break that point it doesn't break if it doesn't break like when ucj probably couldn't break 109 whatever it was we couldn't break 109 8 or 109 7 or its lowest point that it dropped to obviously it's gonna fly back up don't matter how many times you're trying to push it down I mean, obviously, you see the candles are trying to push it down as much as you can, but if it doesn't, then, you know, after the third or fourth time, it's it's worth the buy. And so, I'm going to just have to, like, pull up a chart or something for you guys to see. Me talking ain't doing it. <laughs> so, uh, I mean... <laughs> I used to look at support and resistance a lot back then. And the reason why I don't use your support and resistance anymore is because then you start relying on candles. And then with candles, there's so many freaking patterns for candles. And I mean, I do have, I'll show you guys what I have here on this, on my wall here. I do have like a bunch of like candlestick patterns and some other stuff that I look at, but I don't even bother looking over there anymore and so I mean it's just there just for me to take a look at but usually here's the thing if you're swinging if you're swinging there is no point looking at support and resistance because she, you, because you should already mark up your charts where it's gonna go, like up this way for, for a couple hours. It's gonna go down, then it's gonna go back up, and it's gonna go back down, then it's gonna go back up. You shouldn't rely on support resistance when you're swinging. You should already know that if you're gonna swing a trade, you're gonna be swinging long term. That's something that 
you should get some support and resistance out of it if you're going to swing. Scalping, I don't really scalp anymore unless if I'm going to scalp on a 15 minute chart or a 30 minute chart, you know, like buy it for, uh, let's see, buy, like that one day I bought USDJPY for like less than an hour and then I resold it back again. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, um, man, I'm having a brain fart. I can't really think of. <laughs> oh my gosh! I totally. I I did want to say something that was very important. I just can't remember what it was. Well. When I make this second video, it'll probably pop up in my head. Um, you know, you guys, yeah, so there you guys have it. I'm not going to think about what I what I was going to say anymore. So there you guys have it. There's my reason for not using support and resistance anymore. I look at the price points. I look exactly what the highest price of the day, the lowest price of the day. If they can't break that, I'm definitely, you know, reversing the trades. And like I said, go back to the 12-hour window. You know, if you don't want to stick to the 12-hour window, you can stick to the 8 hours. Every 8 hours sessions, right? And just remember that London overlaps with New York. My time, 7 a.m. to 10, 10 a.m. And Tokyo session does overlap with London sessions for that one, that first hour when, to when London session opened from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Very, very crazy stuff happens at that time too. And then you got uh, Sydney, Sydney sessions and then Tokyo sessions overlapping each other uh, from six to uh, is it 6 p.m. up until, I think they overlap the longest. Because Sydney sessions open right after New York closes at 4 p.m. my time, and then when two hours after that, Tokyo sessions open. But at 1 a.m., Sydney sessions closes, and then 2 a.m., London sessions open, and then from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., Tokyo sessions overlap. <laughs> so it's crazy what what happens. When you, well, a lot of stuff does happen from midnight to 3 a.m. So, and, um, I, uh, I can't think straight. Maybe I should have waited, like, later on in the day. I know it's only 11 a.m., but I was fishing this morning, too, so. Uh, okay, well. I am going to make uh, some more videos on what else I want to talk about. I just can't think today. I have no idea what's going on. I mean, yesterday I was all about it, and then today I just totally pooped myself. I don't know what's going on. Maybe because I didn't get no fish t this morning. But like I said, I will make more videos. Uh, I don't know what the next subject is going to be, so I'll just, as soon as it comes up in my head, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. So, so I'm going to summarize the price value. Understand that the price gaps, understand the highest, the highest of that day and the lowest of that day. If it doesn't break that, after two, three times, obviously, I'm going to buy it. And a lot of people wait for the next candle to confirm it. I don't because, because if it can't break for that, two three candles why would you want to wait for the next candle anyways and so and so i'm back to the aggressive mode of approaching fast paced trading and so i i i do that my turnaround time executing trades is, is is as fast as i want it I want it to be you know i don't wait for a certain price to hit to to say, hey, maybe I should wait until USDJ5 hits 
110.7 or 110.6 down by no if it can't break that if it can't break if it can't break that lower uh price value from from yesterday it definitely i'm just gonna buy it <clears throat> can i be wrong yes i can be wrong and so i mean i i would definitely like i would definitely like to make a video when when i am wrong you know that way i can know my mistakes and i want to record this and keep recording this I'm always trying to, I want to always and try to prove myself. All right, guys, I think that's all I got.